it all boils down to looking at um, what, what the consumer wants. So coming into the business, we decided to take a different strategy, which is what we call the omni-channel model. In Nigeria, 99% um, of, of transactions are still being done offline. So we thought it was important for us to launch with both physical stores and an online platform. So, so that way, we're able to move customers from offline customers to online customers. You walk into our store and you buy a phone, but we let you know that you can buy over 500,000 products on our website. So next time, you're more likely to go online and, and, and buy a product. So that's one, the omni-channel omni strategy. Um, two, we also invested heavily in our logistics and our warehousing network. Um, there's no e-commerce player in the market today that's invested the kind of money we invested in building um, structures in Nigeria. Um, Jeff Bezos, he said something. He said that if you can see your future very clearly, it's not, it's not very difficult for you to take decisions today. So that's what we did. We invested a lot in our warehouses. We have warehouses in Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja, and we have smaller warehouses in, in different hubs across the country. We have over 30 stores nationwide. We built our own logistics network, so we control over 90% of our own logistics. So all those things set us apart from competition because we're looking at how do we make things better for the customer. When the Central Bank of Nigeria introduced the cashless policy some years ago, it seemed like it wasn't well best suited for Nigeria's economy, which was predominantly cash-based at the time. Mm -hmm. But now there are a lot of transactions yes. that you can do online from the comfort of your home. Yes. There are so many other things you can do online apart from buying things. Tell me about Conga.com's e-commerce solutions. So let, let me give it to CBN first of all. I think they've done a great job in driving that cashless policy. But the reality is there was still a long way from, from where we should be. And, and that gap is mainly because traditional banks um, don't see the need to go into certain rural areas to, to get customers. So to bridge that gap, um, I think mobile money has done a great job to, to build that gap. And Conga, we have a CBN licensed uh, mobile money platform called Conga Pay. Now with Conga Pay, you have a wide we have access to a wide variety of services from being able to pay for your jam, to pay for your DSTV, to transfer money to different people anywhere in the world. And all these services put together make life easier for people in rural areas that don't have access to tra traditional banks. We also, we're also rolling out uh, agents across, across Nigeria so that if at all you need cash, you're able to um, withdraw cash from your wallet and de deposit cash into your wallet from anywhere in the country. So this is what we're doing to bridge that gap and ensure that in the future we have a more cashless Nigeria. And of course, we have our, our, our core business, which is Conga.com, which is driving online delivery. With online delivery, especially with prepaid delivery, we're ensuring that we're able to deliver products to you without any exchange in physical cash. All these things help, especially with what's happening right now with the COVID. Um, it's important that there's no physical interaction, especially when it has to do with cash. So all these things put together are what we're really doing to drive the, the, the cashless Nigeria policy. Basically, Conga.com mm -hmm. provides an online marketplace for retailers and buyers. Mm -hmm. What, at the moment, what is Conga.com's market share? Um, Conga controls a sizable um, amount of the market share today. Um, being one of only few big players in, in the e-commerce market in Nigeria today, we control quite a sizable share. Uh, and, and, and the rest is really held by very small social media um, um, sellers, people that sell on social media. Um, today, we have over 2 million um, customers in our database, and it continues to grow. Uh, we also have over 100,000 merchants that sell on our platform. So, so like you said, we connect buyers and sellers, but we also have products that we, we, um, we, we buy ourselves and supply into the market. So combining all, all those things together, that's what gives us our strength. And based on our business model, we continue to multiply our customer base on a yearly basis. It's one thing to have a huge customer base. It's another thing to be able to serve all of them efficiently. Mm -hmm. Considering the implications of huge traffic, mm -hmm. how does Conga.com manage mm -hmm. such traffic? We know e-commerce runs on technology, so yes. I, I imagine there will be lots of investments going into that. Tell me oh, about yes, how yes. it works. Uh, I mean, we've made huge, huge investments in, in technology. Um, if, if you go back in the past, things were a lot easier because you didn't have as, as, as many internet users. So you launch a site today, it's very unlikely it goes from 10,000 users to 100,000 users overnight. But the reality we live in today is you can launch a site today, you have 10,000 users, tomorrow you can have 100,000 users. It scales very quickly. So, but luckily, cloud technology has been able to solve that problem. So, so we partner with one of the top three cloud solution companies in the world, which allows us to auto-scale. So the more traffic we get, it's very easy for us to upscale our, our backend to be able to deal with that traffic. Of course, being part of the, being associated with the Zynox group, it also gives us a lot of leverage in the access to technology we have. Conga employs over 100 developers um, in Nigeria today, which also gives us a lot of leverage in terms of expertise. 
actually Conga was one of the first companies to, to train to train um, developers on a large scale. So we have a lot of expertise when it comes to technology. We also invested over 120 million since we um, since Zanos Group acquired Conga in technology operations and and uh, infrastructure. So give us an idea of how well Conga.com is really doing in the market um, in terms of the revenue, in terms of total value, and all of that. Okay. So um, as you know. Uh, two, three years ago, Conga was uh, acquired by the Zanos Group. So since then, we've, we've been able to increase our revenue by over 1,000% since that time um, to date. Um, we've also been able to cut costs drastically. Um, at the point we acquired Conga, it was losing about 400 million naira every month. Uh, as you know, e-commerce is right now is not a, the most profitable business, but we believe in the future, which is why we, we invested in the business. But right now, we've been able to cut those losses down to about um, uh, 100 million naira a month. Um, so it's, it's significant improvement. It's not where we want to be. But it's huge, significant improvement, and we expect to continue to grow um, further. In terms of the value of the business, um, we were in talks with an investor, a European investor, um, last year. They valued the business at, at about three hundred uh, million dollars, but we sincerely believe that that valuation was um, or it was undervalued, um, because if you look at the amount of investment we put in since the business was launched to the point the business was acquired, we put in a, a, a huge amount of money to get Conga to where it is today. And looking at the future and the potentials that e-commerce holds in Africa, we believe that that was hugely undervalued. So, so um, we're doing our best to continue to, to stay focused, continue to drive the business, continue to grow the numbers, and hopefully one day we'll go public. By the very nature of this company being an e-commerce company, a lot of people, it's part of a lot of people's daily lives. Yes. That's speaking of impact. But I want to find out about the sort of impact you have in society. Mm. We're talking of CSR, impacting lives. Okay. What does Conga.com do? Um, I think CSR is something very, very, very important to us. Um, and, we, and we do a lot of things uh, around CSR. Um, just to mention a few, we have our cadet program. Um, so what Conga picks, we handpick um, very intelligent people from different universities usually centered around technology and marketing, digital marketing. And we take them through a six-month crash course on, to be, help them build their skills to an international level. And then what we do is we select the best of them and we offer them immediate employment in Conga. Um, those who don't make the program, we, we help them find jobs in, in other places. So, so, so that's one way we help um, give back to society. And another way is um, during critical times like the, like the uh, lockdown, where a lot of people couldn't provide for themselves, um, we thought it was important to help families feed. And we always have a very direct, direct approach. So we engaged all our staff in the company, almost 1,000 staff, and, and we, gave, we fed uh, between three to seven families for the period of two weeks. So each, each staff had to feed between three to seven families. Starting from junior staff fed about three families all the way to senior staff that fed about seven families within that period. So, so little things like this um, really help um, put a smile on people's faces. Um, we also have what we call a Conga Cares uh, CSR program, where we, which is an outreach program to um, orphanages, anybody we can really help. And we really engage them on a monthly basis, visit them, give gifts to the children, give, donate food, and do whatever we can just to put a smile on their faces. Why the choice of these CSR areas? Um, f so for us, we always prefer a very direct approach. If we're going to give back, we prefer to give back directly to the people that need it. Um, we, we don't really believe in donations. Um, to big, big organizations. We believe in, okay, we have what it takes to reach these people directly, so we're going to reach you directly. We're going to empower that student who, who is very smart, but who hasn't been given the opportunity to, to use, that, um, use that skills in a positive way. We're going to empower the, the child who is in an orphanage, who has the potential to become the next president of Nigeria. So we try and connect with people directly instead of going through uh, middlemen. So, so that's why we pick those specific approaches. In the world of business today, CSI is a deliberate, it's usually a deliberate policy. For Conga.com, is there a budget? And if there is, how much is budgeted mm. annually? Um, I can't discuss the exact budget, but I can tell you that a large percentage of our, of our earnings is going to go to giving back. If you look at the impact we have on, on, on society around us alone, Conga employs almost 1,000 people today. But if you look at our reach of merchants, we have over 100,000 merchants on our platform. If you look at our reach of, um, through our logistics platform, we, we partner with different people. So what Conga today is employing almost, or putting, putting food on people's table of almost 150 to 200,000 people. So it's something we really pride ourselves in, and, and it's something that's very important to us. It drives us. We also have programs that we, we, we give people an opportunity to earn money. Like we have our U-Bus program, which is anybody can sign up on our platform. Let's say your mom wants to buy a TV. You can buy it on our behalf, and Conga will pay you a commission for it. 
So we, we, we try as much as possible to find different ways and different interesting ways to, to give people opportunity to earn from themselves. In the course of this chat, you have mentioned the future twice. Mm. I wanted to give you an idea of what Conga.com's future looks like. What are the plans? Are you planning to go global? Are you planning to increase your number of services? Tell yeah. me about it. So, so, so yeah, we're, we're planning to um, increase our reach, especially across Africa. Uh, for us, our focus has always been Africa. We believe that Africa is an untapped market, and whoever taps it first will reap the, the, the highest benefits. So, so we want to go across Africa, explore different markets, understand different, uh, different cultures and environments, and do our best to create an impact in those areas. Um, we're also launching a, a, a lot of products. Um, we, we don't see ourselves as a retail company or as a, as a marketplace. We see ourselves as a technology company. Now, what that means is that you can build a lot of services on, on your existing technology. So, for example, last year, we announced that we're going to launch uh, Conga, Conga Health. Which, is, um, which provides health services, um, pharmaceuticals um, to people across Nigeria. Unfortunately, we had a lot of issues with uh, the, the agency that manages pharm pharmacies, PCN, um, but, but that's something that's still going to roll out eventually. And we also have a solution that, about, that we just launched um, with a top oil company, it's a procurement solution. So we noticed that there's a lot of issues when it comes to corporate procurement. It's a very cumbersome process. You, you send out bids, you wait for one or two weeks, but Conga today has over 100,000 merchants selling on a platform. So you can have one product and 20 different people are selling that same product. So what happens is that the pricing is very aggressive because everybody's trying to have the best price so they can get the best and um, can get the, the most sales. So these, these, these um, procurement heads, they see this as a huge benefit because instead of going through that long process of procurement, you can come to one platform and get almost everything you want to buy. So we have a lot of products like, like that rolling out. Um, a few will be announced in a few weeks uh, that I can't speak of right now. Um, so, so, like I said, we're a technology company, we we'll continue to build on, on, on the existing technology we have. So don't be surprised if Conga is uh, launching uh, spaceships in, <laughs> into space uh, next year. Another big step in the future could be getting listed in stock yeah, exchange. Yeah. When do you plan to do that? So I won't say it's, it's an objective of ours. You know, at the end of the day, list, getting listed, it has to do with funding, access to funding. Uh, right now, we're very comfortable with, uh, with, with the group that's funding our business. Uh, we have a lot of access to capital. Like I said, we invested over $120 million in just the, in, in just the last two years. So, so we have a lot of access to funding. But uh, it will get to the point where Conga needs to scale beyond measure, where we need to scale across Africa, where Conga becomes a company worth billions of dollars. And at that point, we need a lot of funding to run the business. So, so at that point, we we'll definitely love to, uh, love to get listed. Of course, we, we, the New York Stock Exchange has reached out to us, Nigerian Stock Exchange has reached out to us, London Stock Exchange has reached out to us. But we don't feel the time is right yet. Once we feel the time is right, then we can take that step.